Hello my spooky babes out there and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys all the products that are gonna go in my fall to winter daily makeup drawer. I'm gonna just give you guys swatches, little mini reviews, let you guys know why they are products that I'm reaching for for this season. But before we get into this video, if you're new here, hello, welcome, my name is Brie and I am just a crazy lover of all things beauty and I like to post a lot of fun, colorful makeup content. I like to do a lot of any makeup, so if that is what you're into, then please hit that subscribe button and join this little family. With that being said, Let's get into this video. So I cannot believe that it's already October, that we're in full Halloween season, and I'm fully embracing it with this look right here, which I did film for Instagram. It's already live on my Breezy underscore beauty page, but I was using the Nomad Hudson Valley palette, and this is my second look with the palette. I filmed the first look for YouTube, so if you haven't seen that video, I was using new and current fall favorites, and most of those products in the look is going to be featured in my daily makeup drawer today. But I'm gonna do a whole like bird's eye view of all the products so you won't see my face. You'll just see my hands. I'll give you guys like mini reviews, swatches. I'll tell you the reasons why I picked these products for this season and just have fun like going through makeup. I love watching these kind of videos and I was ultimately inspired by Andrea Matiliano to do this because I love her daily makeup drawer videos. You can just get so much info. You get to see swatches, you get to see the product up close and I think that's just so fun so I started doing this myself I did one for the summer and now I'm doing one for this season and I hope to continue this trend and do it next year as well but I think we should now get into the products and then I will come back here and wrap up this video right okay so here we are to my hands and here's all of the makeup that's going in my daily makeup drawers for fall into winter I'm not featuring any palettes in this because I tend to switch up my palettes a lot, do a lot of reviews, so it'd be hard for me to just commit to a certain pile of palettes, but let's get into it. I think we should start off with complexion products, then I'll get into like face cheek products, and then we'll get into lippies, because that part takes me forever, because I like to swatch them all out for you guys, but let's dive in. So, of course, I said before, if you saw my fall makeup, get ready with me. I talked about how I like to use more hydrating products. So I have this Ola Hendrickson Banana Bright Face Primer. This is quite hydrating. It's really nice, but it's still on the lightweight side. But it just gives like a nice, I don't know, I guess like a gel moisturizer almost. And it gives a little bit of a glow. And I really like it. I love how it smells. This is also my project pen. So I'm trying to use it up this season. I also included another primer. I have this one from the Hourglass. This is the Vanish Airbrush Primer. This is also nice and lightweight. Kind of feels like a gel moisturizer. This one is more smoothing and just slightly different in the consistency. It's a little thicker but it feels so good on the skin. I feel like it does give hydration, but does help keep the skin matte. It gives a nice like airbrush effect, like the name of the primer. I also included this one because I still get oily throughout the winter time. That will never completely go away. I just don't get as oily as I usually do like in the summer. So this is the Kimchi Chic FN Primer. This is the smooth matte version. They do have a hydrating version, which I have not tried. I'm not sure if that's a good one, but this one kind of feels like a silicone -y primer, it even looks like one. So if you don't like those kind of primers, this might not be your jam. But I do feel like this makes my skin feel really soft, really smooth, and it does help mattify my light T-zone. So this is where I focus it. I only put it in my T-zones and that's it. And then I'll put like the more hydrating products on like the perimeters of my face. But these are the three primers that I'm going to be focusing on. I did also include this primer from Unearthly Cosmetics. This is their Glimmer Grass. This is their glitter primer or glitter glue. I've been really enjoying this and there's so many palettes coming out with more sparkly, flaky shadows that can really benefit from a glitter glue. So I wanted to add this in my drawer since I ran out of the next one. So I'm trying to give this some love. This is a good one if you guys are like shopping on Unearthly's Cosmetics website and you need to add something to the cart. This is a good one to add. So now getting into foundation. So I mainly like to use more lightweight hydrating foundations during the fall, winter, cause it's colder, I'm less oily, I'm not sweating as much. And 
you know, everybody's skin could use a little extra hydration, especially in the cold months. So I have the Pretty Fresh Foundation from ColourPop, which I just featured in that fall makeup video that I did. If you guys want to see this in action, it's a really nice hydrating foundation but it's not on the dewy side it doesn't make you overly glowy but it does have a slight glow to it it's just really nice almost like a satin like a hydrating satin foundation so it's very very good and more on the affordable side i did also add this from the beauty blender this is the balanced skin tint this is very lightweight it feels almost like you're putting a serum on your face it does have hydrating qualities to it as well and it's maybe a little bit more matte than the Pretty Fresh foundation, but I love this and I feel like I've been neglecting it during like the summer months, so I want to give it some love because it's a really good skin tint. I also have this right here. This is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This definitely has more coverage than the other two foundations that I showed you. This is more of a true matte satin foundation. It has a little bit of like glowiness to it, but overall it's a matte satin. And sometimes I might want a more matte product and need something like that maybe if i want it to be just more long lasting i will go for this one i mean it's not as long lasting as like my staples like the estee lauder double wear or the um what is the other one the one from one size beauty but it's it's a nice in between one and i like the coverage and i haven't been playing with it much so i want to use it more also through in this right here this is the uh, what is it? Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This is beautiful, guys. It's very lightweight. It makes your skin look very healthy. It is hydrating, but it does last pretty well for being a more hydrating, lightweight kind of foundation. And I think it's beautiful. It makes your skin look just so naturally amazing like i just love this a lot and this is another one i haven't touched that much since we've been like the hot like summer months and i've been needing the most mattifying products that i could find so it's time for this to shine this season then i also included this one from nabla this is a skin realist foundation this one is way more hydrating than the other ones that i showed you it has a glow to it it has like skincare ingredients in it which i think the ColourPop one does too but this has hyaluronic acid in it so helps keep the skin nice and moisturized all day long this one has a pump i haven't really been like showing you guys the foundation colors but it's really pretty really good if you want something more hydrating and surprisingly the coverage is pretty good on this so the last thing i'm including is the rare beauty positive light tinted moisturizer this one is lightweight just like the other tinted moisturizer that i included the um beauty blender one but it's a little bit more sheer i feel like this one has more coverage but sometimes i just don't want a heavy foundation and i love more lightweight stuff Especially if I'm just running errands, it's a quick day out, and I'm not doing much. I mean, I just, I don't sweat that much during this year, so I like to have lightweight moments, you know, have that natural glam. So I included this one, and it actually lasts pretty well for being more of a lightweight, hydrating product. Oh, I totally forgot to talk about this primer. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer. This is a gripping primer, so I included this one as well when I just need really long-wearing makeup and I just need my makeup to stay on my face. So if I'm going to a party, a Christmas party, you know, some kind of holiday event, it's a time of the year we start going to parties. So when I know I'm gonna need my makeup to, you know, stand the test of time, you know, last all day, I really like this one. It's also smoothing and just a really good long wearing primer. Now I'm going on to concealers. So I have all hydrating concealers, one that's more like a satin one. But I put the Nabla Regeneration Uplifting Creamy Concealer, nice and hydrating. This one has more light coverage, so if I'm not wanting a heavy coverage kind of day under my eyes, I'll go for this one. The only thing is it has a sponge applicator and the sponge has come off, which is super annoying. So I have to like squeeze the product out on my hand and then pick it up with a sponge. Definitely think that is a packaging flaw, but it's nice. You just twist it up from the bottom. It kind of reminds me of the Maybelline age rewind but i do feel like the maybelline one has more coverage 
and then I also have the rose ink concealer I did use this in that fall video this one is really nice it has good coverage it brightens under the eyes it's quite hydrating it's easy to blend but it does have a little bit more thickness than the uh, one from Nabla or the other ones I'm about to show you but it's good it's really good then I also have included the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Primer. This one feels like skincare. It's almost like a watery texture, but it's so nice under the eyes. It makes your under eyes instantly feel hydrated. That's why I like this one. It is a light medium to coverage one, but I've been really loving this. This is super good. The last one is for those days I want more coverage because this has I would say medium to almost full coverage. This is the Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer from LYS. It has a similar consistency to the foundation. I'd say maybe it's a little bit more matte than the foundation, but it's beautiful. It's great coverage. It lasts all day. It doesn't crease on me, doesn't dry out my under eyes, and my under eyes do get dry. That's why I included more hydrating concealers but this one doesn't dry them out but it does last long so this is really good now let's get into like powders bronzers blushes so i only incorporated two powders in here i may pull for other ones outside of this but the ones that i wanted to focus on that i feel are more lightweight less mattifying powders are these two right here so i have the pat mcgrath labs this is the skin fetish sublime perfection blurring under eye powder this is beautiful guys it is so silky it just feels so good when you touch it. It makes your under eyes feel silky and smooth. It blurs, it just makes my under eyes look flawless. And it's more lightweight, but it does do a good job at setting my concealer, making sure my concealer doesn't crease. I love this. It's more on the pricey side, but I totally think it's worth it because the formula is so good. I also included the LYS Pressed Powder. This one I think is in the shade Medium. This one is a more lightweight powder, so it's not super matte. It just sets the face very nicely, makes everything look airbrush. It still allows a little glow to come through, and that's what I'm looking for when it gets colder. The super matte ones just make my under eyes look so dry when it's super cold, and that's the one area that I just get really flaky and crusty at when it's like really cold outside. So I want more lightweight powders. Then going on to bronzer, so I included this Rare Beauty Stick Bronzer. I have the shade called Power Boost. Unfortunately, this is on the light side. Doesn't that look super light? Almost looks like my foundation color, but I do get at least one to two shades lighter in the winter. So it's like, you know what, this is my chance to really try it out more, play with it, give it some love and see if it's worth picking up a darker version. I just feel like the colors are weird, but this is so light. I just couldn't figure out which one to pick. And the next one up looked too dark, but the formula blends out like a dream. Like, look at that, it's already on my skin, but it looks like my skin color, right? <laughs> like it just meshed right in. I could probably use this as a foundation at this point. Now getting into powder bronzer. So I wanna give some love to my one size beauty one. This is the Made for Shade Bronzer and Sculpt Trio. I have the shade medium, but I love the options in here. So you get three different tones, a big mirror. So you get like a warm tone one, a neutral one, and a more cool tone. This one is like a perfect shade when I start to get a little lighter because it's not overly dark, but the pigmentation is excellent on this, but they are very blendable. But you see how they're like the same shade, but just different undertones. I just think that's so cool. Sometimes I want something more warm. Sometimes I want something neutral. And sometimes I want to contour a little. So I want to play with this more. I feel like because I kept like buying so many new things, I didn't get a chance to give this enough love. So I'm pulling that back out. And I want to also give this some love. This is the Juvia's Place Bronzer and Medium. I do feel like this is on the lighter side. I felt like this was a little too light for me during the summertime because I always get like nice and tan. I spend a lot of time at the pool in the sun. So I wanted to pull this out because I feel like it's going to be perfect as I start to fade, especially in my face. Like that's the one place that never really stays tan on me but you can see it's overall light but this one also has more of like a cooler maybe neutral more undertone and then a warm tone so i do like these as well 
And I think they're a nice formula. Now, I feel like I love the one size beauty one a little bit more in terms of how soft and blendable it is, but it's still nice and it is a more affordable option. And now let's get into blushes, which I tend to go a little blush heavy. I'm sure I'll pull at other blushes in my collection because that is one of my favorite products when it comes to makeup besides eyeshadow palettes is blushes. So I included this one from Juvia's Place. This is one of the new shades that they came out with this year. This is volume five. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? It's just so like rosy, pinky, like warm pinkies, but more bright and poppy. And for some reason, I don't know, I like to be a little bit more <laughs> extra during the holidays. And I like the effect it gives. It gives you that like rosy cheeks from like when you come out from the cold and you go into your house and your cheeks are a little flush and red. I feel like it gives that effect. So I want to give this more love because I think I've only used it a few times, but I think the shade is beautiful. I also included this because I got this last year and I hardly use it. This is the Doja Cat Floral Powder Blush Trio. This was the collab with BH Cosmetics, but look at these tones. They're a little bit on the lighter side, so I think it will work as I get lighter throughout the winter, but I feel like these are very fally kind of colors. It has this orangey shade, which is a little bit more bright, but then it has like this more muted, almost bronzy tone, and I feel like this one is more like a brownie yellow, but I feel like they all make beautiful blushes, and it just has like fall all over it, like these kind of tones. So I was like, yes, I'm gonna play with that. And then I included some red blushes. So I love wearing red blushes during the holidays because it gives you that flush cheek effect. But I have the Kaleidos blush. I think this is called Sanguine, I think is the shade name. But look at that, it's a beautiful red. But it's like not a intense red, maybe it's like more of a muted red but it's so pretty. I love it, I can't get enough of it. Then I also included my most favorite one, which is from Nabla. It's a glowy red, guys. It's a glowy red, and I feel like it's really hard to find glowy red blushes. I think this was meant to be maybe like a, it's like a highlighter and like deeper skin tones, but look at that, and it glows. It's just so rare to find a shade like that, and. I love this so much. So it's like, yes, that's going in the drawer. Then I also have this one, which is called Spice Cinnamon. Come on, it's a fall kind of name. So I had to pull it, but this one's like a more warmy mauve shade. I don't know how to describe this, but this is really pretty. I love these duels from Cover Effects because you get a matte version, which I feel like this is a little similar. Maybe it leans a little bit more peachy. And then you get a glowy version. And I love to mix these two. And I'm just more of a glowy blush person. So I like that option to have these together. Then I included some blushes that are more new to my collection. So I have these two from About Face. These are their cream blushes. They're so freaking amazing i raved about these in my recent ranking makeup purchases if you want to check that out you also have a video where i use these blushes on camera but you'll see they're so creamy and emollient they just melt as soon as you touch them with your finger and i got the best shades for fall so this is like a purpley one you can build them up you can blend them out they're just so easy to work with so if you want a flush or if you want to get it a little bit more intense and then i have this one called smash which is of course a red but in a cream version which i never owned a cream red blush so i'm happy to have one in my collection but look at that oh it's so so pretty i did order some new colors because they were on sale on ulta's website already they had like a whole beauty event going on so i picked up like three more shades because they're just so good and then i also included this one from key so care this is the shade called Sensual, and this is also really nice. It's a little bit more of a balm, a little bit more stiff. It's not as creamy as the About Face ones, but I like it because it's on the sheer side. So if you just want to flush, you can get that, but you can build these up, and I think they look so pretty. This is perfect for the flush cheek, 
moment and it is a beautiful winey burgundy shade which i think is just such a beautiful color for the fall and autumn and everything so i wanted to give this a lot more love then i also have some single blushes in here this is a color pop like custom palette but i included my lethal blushes and my two blushes from menagerie i use this in that get ready with me it's such a beautiful like deeper mustard oh it's so beautiful for this time of the year i love doing mustardy looks i love wearing mustardy colored clothes and then this is a beautiful like blueberry lavender shade you guys can see i like these kind of different colors i guess not the usual traditional shades and then these right here are so warm and scrumptious so i have like this more yellowy one but then this one's a little bit more orange kind of similar to that but this one's a little deeper and honestly, I don't know when I swatch anything, but they're really powdery, but super blendable. Then this beautiful like peach shade that's a little bright. And I have another <laughs> matte red blush, which this one is more of a true red. I feel like the other ones were a little bit more muted reds, but come on, come on. You guys can't deny these are like fall colors. My swatches are horrible, but I just thought these were going to be perfect for the fall season. So that is it when it comes for blushes. Let's get into highlighters. So I included this highlighter from Cleona. This is part of the Dragon Fruit Collection, the collab with Emily Violet Marie. But this is a shade called Tropical. This is gorgeous, guys. This is so beautiful. It's a shifty highlighter, but do you guys see how intense that is? Sometimes I just want to be blinding during the holidays. That is your time to get all glittery and glitzy and shiny. And this has a go to orange to green. It is super intense. So it's not for the faint of hearts, okay? This is a blinding highlighter, but you can tone it down if you go with less. But why? Why would you? Look at that gorgeousness. Then I also have this other dual chrome highlighter. This is from Letho. I forgot the shade name, but I will try to link things below if I can. I don't know. I have too much products here. It might be hard, um, but I can link the video where I use this. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This was part of their Night Flower collection. This one, I think, has like a pink to green. Am I seeing that right? It's, it's pretty. It's also very, very gorgeous. Then I also wanted to get a little bit more interesting. You know, we're going into the spooky season. This is a green highlighter from Unearthly Cosmetics. It used to be Alien Cosmetics, but this is the shade called Flicker. It's a green highlighter, but I feel like Halloween's the one time I feel comfortable wearing a green highlighter because I just feel like it fits the season. But this is very smooth and beautiful and kind of more minty. But I feel like I'm going to get some use out of this. I've been a little bit more adventurous with my highlighters, doing more color shifty ones, you know, experimenting more. Usually those were things I avoided, but I do like it. It was part of like a holiday collection. That's why I have it. But now I want to get some use out of it. Then I also included these highlighters. I have a bunch of shifty highlighters <laughs> for this season, but this is the Michaela Pot 2 highlighter palette. This was the collab with Glamlight and Michaela, the round two. And this is full of dual chrome highlighters. And I was like, this is new to my collection. I want to play with it because I do think it's nice. They're very pretty. I feel like these are a little bit more on the drier side, like a little firmly pressed, but you see it. And then this one right here, they all have just different shifts to them, right? I think that's green. This is like violet to blue. And then this one is like a, like a goldy shade, which I actually use this more as like a blush topper. I feel like it's just a little too dark to be a highlighter on me or just like mix this one with one of the other ones that are a little lighter, but they're really pretty. Look at that. So I also have some highlighter palettes, which these are both fairly new to my collection. I have featured both of these on my channel, but they're full of shifty highlighters. And look at that spooky season right there. But these are gorgeous, guys. These are pretty. These feel more dry to the touch, but they look beautiful on the cheeks. They're absolutely stunning. All of them have beautiful shifts to them. You see that? Oh, they swatch really nicely, too. Oh my gosh, I could stare at these all freaking day. And then the last row, which has like some green, 
bluey shifty ones like pinky shifts oh my god but you know if you like shifty highlighters like this or you're just wanting to try these are really pretty you could even use these as like inner corner highlights with looks on the lids because they're just gorgeous if you want to do more like halloween kind of looks these will be perfect to incorporate then i have this one from blend bunny which is kind of a similar setup to the one from bella butte bar which i didn't even tell you guys where that's from the oracle chrome palette then i'm also including this one from blend bunny this is the noctilucent palette which seems similar to the oracle chrome palette but the formula is very different like you see, they're similar setups, same concept. They're all full of like shifty shades, but this one has more of a sparkly formula and it's more on the creamy side. So they're very different, but I'll show you guys how they look next to each other. Like I'll leave these ones here, but these are also just so beautiful. If you like more of a cream texture and you like very sparkly ones, and these ones are meant to have like a translucent base. So that they'll work on all different skin tones but do you see those see how like they both have like a pinky shifty one a purple shifty one a blue shifty one and then down here i mean i like both of these the same like i don't think i have a preference i'm happy that i have both even though there's like similarities to both of them but i like the different formulas if i want something a little bit more smooth i'll go for these if i want a little bit more sparkle but you see, it's like very similar with the kind of shifts that they have. So obviously great minds think alike because they release both of these palettes at the same time. Then I do have a few eye products that I was like, you know what, let's add these in. They're like liners and like liquid shadows. But this is from Julia's Place. This is their dual chrome liquid eyeshadow in Fula. But this one is like an iridescent grainy blue shift. Like, wow. This would make such a beautiful inner corner highlight or like a topper to other shadows so i need to actually use this it's been sitting forever and i felt like you know what i'm gonna start doing like some cool halloween looks and stuff i need to incorporate this beautiful dual chrome shadow then i also included the unearthy cosmetics liners these are the i forgot the name of these the immortality liquid eyeliners these are glittery shifty liner so i'll do some swatches i have the shade cut gem which this one has a i think blue blue and green shift i'm trying to make thicker swatches so you can see and they're really glittery i really like the applicators too it's really easy to apply these and do like you know graphic liner looks and then this one is called serene this is a more like ready tone one pretty right right and then the last one i have here is called i think it was called embers the sticker is gone but this one's like a bronzy to green one which i think would work if you're more of like a nudie lover but they're really pretty and i've been enjoying them so much but you see they're shifty they're glittery and this is the time where we like to be extra glittery or at least i like to incorporate more glitter and be like holiday glitz with these so i was like yeah let's add these the last thing i wanted to include is this palette right here this is full of cake liners this is from glisten cosmetics they collab with the fairy freak these are good i'm so into graphic liners now i've been using this palette so much and the formula is amazing very creamy easy to use you just put water in them they're water activated liners you can just create like the coolest looks in your eyes or just use this for a wing liner and you know just create with it this is fun it makes me feel really creative when i use this i just want to try different things so i want to use this and see if i could create some cool festive looks with this now getting on to the last bit of things which are lip products and i know this is going to take me a while because i like to swatch them out for you guys but i included some of my proper lipsticks my more like deeper ones this is prowess which is I guess leaning a little bit more nude, but like a deeper nude. Love Propa Beauty. I think they're called Propa. I will say Propa, which is, I don't think right. But this is the shade called Fighter. Look at that. Look at that deep cocoa shade. I love using like deep browns in the fall. But then I also have some lipsticks from the Besame collection from It's Bell Cosmetics. They have some vampy shades in the range. So I have Pella Grossa. 
probably said that wrong. It's a very deep brownie red. Like, yes, yes. These are definitely more on the matte side. And then this shade right here is called La Jefa, which is just a fiery orangey red. Yes, that is a fall lipstick right there. Then I have, I think just a few from Lethal Cosmetics. These are their lipsticks. I have the shade Virtue, which this one's just a more like cool tone mauve shade, which I do a lot of cool tone looks, especially during this time of the year. And then I also put in Myth. It's a nice, sexy, warm cocoa shade. Oh, they're so creamy. They're such a nice formula. And then I think I have, oh, I have one more. I have Angsum, another deep cocoa shade. Look at that. This one's more cool tone than the one that I swatched up here from Propa. But they're just more darker colors. That's what I go for. Then I included this one from Give Me Glow. This is one of their liquid lipsticks, but this is in Whiskey and Honey. It's a mustardy shade, guys. This is meant for the fall season, right? Look at that, it's a deeper mustard. These do dry down completely matte, but they're not that drying. Like I feel like they're pretty comfortable. I mean, they do dry down, they do have a matte finish, but they're just not as drying as other liquid lipsticks that I've tried. Then I have some of my Black Moon Cosmetics liquid lipsticks. These are, you know, definitely dry down matte ones. They're a little bit more drying than the Gimme Glow, at least in my opinion, but I have this beautiful olive which I think these were limited edition shades, but I think they always come back with these during this time of year. I think the last time I checked these were sold out, but this is the shade Hazel. And then I have the shade Cut Cider. I got it in like their Harvest Bundle. This is also a mustard shade, but it's just lighter than the one from Give Me Glow. Then I have some of my Unearthly Cosmetics Satin Liquid Lipsticks. These are definitely more comfortable. They don't completely dry down. But I have Ginger, which is a bright orange. That's Halloween right there. And it makes me think of like a jack-o'-lantern. I have the shade called Minerva, which is a beautiful red, but like an orangey red. Ooh, that is sexy. Then they have this one called Mandy. It's like a greeny mustard. Well, it's like a warm greeny olive. Like this one's a little bit more cool tone. This one's more warm. Ooh, these shades. I love a good olive. I feel like olive is a very wearable color. You may not think so if you're a nudie lover, but I do feel like olives look so pretty on all different skin tones. All right, I try to clean my hand off as best as possible so we can do some more swatches. So I included the Dose of Colors Liquid Lipstick in Date Night, which is just a deep red. That's like a vampire-y red. <laughs> would describe it these are definitely more comfortable when it comes to liquid lipsticks i did also include this one from dose of colors this is the shade zoe this was part of the nima tang collaboration so it's also a liquid lipstick but look at that it's like a more muted pumpkin shade so beautiful then i also have some of these fenty mademoiselle lipsticks i don't think these are really in stock anymore the last time i checked there was like only a few shades but i included the shade called madame which is a nice beautiful cool red oh, i love wearing reds too during the holidays that's just a staple color for the lips then i have the shade called pumpkin rose right i need it to have this vibrant more almost neon -y orange, but I love it. Then I also have the shades called Shoddy, which I sound so weird when I say that, which is a warm brown. And then I also have the shade called I Quit, which is a cool tone, deeper brown. See how like different they are? This has a lot of gray to it, but both of them I love using. And then I also included this one from Gimme Glow. This is a liquid lipstick. This is part of their happy hour collection, but it's such a like beautiful purpley berry. So it's like, yeah, this is another kind of shade I like to wear in the fall time as well as winter time. I also included this one from Nabla. This is also a liquid lipstick. For some reason, I like rocking liquid lipsticks in the holiday seasons, but this one's more cool tone, like purple shade, but it's so pretty. It's so, so, so pretty. Then, oh, I missed this one. 
This is the Unearthy Cosmetics shade in Samantha. This is like a like a deeper fuchsia berry shade. I also included this one. I love wearing this in the fall. This is the Nabla lipstick in Nolita. Look at that. It's like a muted ready terracotta shade. It's gorgeous on the lips. Then I have a bunch of my Kaleidos Cloud Lip Clays. These are from their more like vampy lineup. So I was like, yeah, these are Halloween colors, okay? Halloween and fall all are in these lipsticks. So I have the shade called Fiamma, which I use in that Get Ready With Me. This is more like a pinky red. Then I also have, what else, what else? We got this one, which is called Queen of the Night. I think this was the apple collection that they came out with but this is like a deep black and purple all of these i've used lately on my channel i have the shade cut scorpion fruit which this is a black and these are more of like moussey textures they're very lightweight on the lips they definitely need more building because some of the darker colors can be more sheer but you can build them up then i have mahogany sexy brown Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna be set all fall and winter season. This one is called Rubino, which is a blackened red shade. This is so beautiful, it gives me vampire vibes too. Then the last very two products are the shade Dahlia, which is a also deep toned red. And then the very last shade is called Agave because I feel like I'm gonna get a little bit more adventurous this season too. It's a, a deep teal, but I can see myself incorporating this in some cool looks. So I included that as well, but that was all the lip products. <laughs> I'll show you these messy swatches, but that was everything guys that will be in my daily makeup drawer. This season I'm set for vampy, more mysterious dark looks and I'm so ready. So I'm going to take you guys back to my face and <laughs> wrap up this video. All right, my loves, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I try to give as much detail and review and swatches and everything on all of these products in case you were wondering about any of them and you know, debating on whether you should pick them up or not or hopefully this inspired you to go through your collection, find some some good fall makeup that you may already have. It could be old stuff, new stuff, and get them all together and give them some love for this season. But you guys will have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What are your fall favorites? Did you enjoy this video? Like, what are your thoughts? I would love to hear from all of y'all. And if you're new here and you enjoy this video and you like a lot of fun and colorful makeup content, you like a lot on indie makeup, then please hit that subscribe button and join this little family. I'd love to have you here. Also, don't forget to check out the description below. I I will try to link the products. It might be kind of hard because there's a lot, but if I can link them all, I will do my best. I will also have other videos of mine in case you are interested in seeing more content from me. I will also have my contact in my social media platforms. Like I said, I'm on Instagram as Breezy underscore beauty, and I'm also there as Breezy Lifestyle. If you want to see more lifestyle and travel stuff, then check out my Instagram, join my fam there. I would really, really love that. But guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, for being here, supporting my channel and I just hope you are having a wonderful fall spooky season so far but I'm just sending you all so much light and love but until next time bye guys <laughs>